When we come back, we're going to talk with Mitzi Delahousie. You will not want to miss this. And I don't say that, Lenny, because I called you out first. What I was saying was, be sure and have a question or two ready for her because we're going to hear stuff that you've not heard before. Not on my show or any other racing show. Stay tuned. More of the Roger Stein Show continues right after this on AM830. And on that note, we'll talk with Mitzi Delahousie. Now, everyone knows that name because, not the Mitzi name, but you will after we speak to her, and, um, and with good reason. Mitzi, good morning. Good morning thank, you for ta- thank you for taking time out with us. Let me get a couple of things in I didn't remember to say. I'll give the pick five result. There were two tickets on Monday, and I'll tell you a little more about that. And Dancing with the Stars, there is a price up. Victor Espinosa is 16 to 1 to win Dancing with the Stars. That's coming up. Now, I know, Mitzi, you have no interest in dancing with Victor Espinosa. I just thought I'd tell you that. By the way, you can parlay that. I am not joking with you now. The American, the American Pharaoh to win the Breeders' Cup Classic and Espinosa to win Dancing with the Stars, you can get 50 to 1. Now, before you get excited and think you can bet 4,000 to win 200, no, you can bet about 50 bucks. I think that's where it's capped at, but I thought I'd let you guys know. Missy, as I look through Google and the Internet, and I read whatever I can about Penn National and what's going on in that side of the country, uh, you are married 30 years to Daryl Delahousie, a trainer right. of a, a, a trainer of some note back there. He's cert- certainly been your home. And... Um, You've spent a lot more time dealing with courts and things in the last few years than you have enjoying your days at the racetrack. Tell us a little about what you've been going through, Mitzi. What we've been going through for the past five years is the corruption in the state of Pennsylvania and at Penn National. It started out with a state investigation which he was the primary target. And you have the assistant district attorney, Fran Charo, stating other people were being arrested and being looked at and being investigated, but he was the primary target. He wasn't setting up races. He wasn't helping these guys get anywhere with the horses for Mike Gill. So, I mean, what, what do you do? You get somebody out the best way you can. They had no proof. They had no evidence. And it, when it came down to the courts, it, it proved that. Mitzi, you, when, I, when I spoke to you yesterday, you said some things that I thought were not only spot on, but delved into your feelings, you know, in your heart. And one of the things was they even made you second guess for a second a marriage to a man that you've known, you know, well, you've been married 30 years, let's face it. Anyone who knows Mitzi Delos, he knows you have Daryl's back. But right. you did say that at one point you said to Daryl, uh, sweetheart, uh, honey bun, I don't know what you call him, but it's got to be something uh, like that. If I find out that you did any of these things, uh, you're going to pack and ride because – because they start getting you to second guess yourself, even though you know these weren't things that were going on. You you, you have to do that. Right. How but bad? I told did him it... if I was going to go out on a limb for him and fight against this, because I wasn't going to sit down and take it lightly. And I told him if you did any of the things that you are being accused of and charged with, you better speak now because you will not embarrass me in, a, in the court's eyes or in the newspapers or anything. I've been humiliated enough with lies and with Penn National. They had bigger things going on at Penn National. And if, if you are a crook, you belong there, because honesty does not belong at that racetrack. You've had people thrown out for no reason fighting for what they believe to be right and in the court when we went to court everything proved just like i told you they could not prove none of that none of what he was being accused of was proven 
I got an email from you saying that uh, you had listened to Mike Gill's interview and that Daryl Delahousie did not, in fact, cut a deal or make no, a deal, cert not. certainly on anyone else's behalf, but you did say that you had agreed to what, not, r not race in Pennsylvania? To not race in the state of Pennsylvania. Yes, that was the only thing we agreed to was to not race in the state of Pennsylvania. When the district attorney asked if we would agree to that, yes, we agreed to it because then you go on down a long road of court again, and it's very costly. And these people who are facing charges now and have went through these charges with the Fed, with the feds, they can see how much it costs. You know, they didn't see what it cost what I went through and what I'm still going through. But now they're feeling it. They're feeling the hit right now. And they'll be feeling it further down the line, too. Betsy, your friends, many of them involved in racing, it's what you do. Those are the people you're going to bump into. They're the people who you're going to sit in the afternoon and, uh, you know, watch races with. It must go back and forth. Who's doing what, and who's the next one to be indicted? And you must have known for five years many of the things that are were coming and are now sort of coming to fruition and playing, acting out the, what you expected to happen. One of those would be Murray Rojas, who many people hear Murray and they assume that's a man, when in fact it is not the case. I don't know any other woman in the country that spells her name. M U R R A Y, and I don't care to know the story, but mm -hmm. uh, for, from uh, they call her, they have her address as Grantville, Pennsylvania. I found some other address here that says she's from Jonestown, Pennsylvania. I don't happen to know Pennsylvania well enough to know. Um, I was in Jonestown. Uh, Lenny Showman and I visited there. Uh, we were going to call back to the states, but they didn't have phones. But I, that's a whole other story. Uh, those people want to live, listen to Jim Jones, and they drank the Kool-Aid, and that's how that expression started. But I'll tell you about that another time. Anyway, getting back to this, uh, Murray Rojas goes down, and from the FBI's website to all of the papers back in Pennsylvania, I couldn't get past two or three stories. I don't know what she was doing, but the, apparently she was giving horses drugs on race day. Um, I don't know if she's admitted to it, but she was indicted. When that happened, there must have been many of your friends going, well, we were waiting. See, there it goes. Uh, we got more. Uh, Mike Gill, you heard him talking about it. When you heard Gill on the radio, you must have thought, goodness gracious, I mean, all these stories are true, but the people listening are thinking, Gill must be crazy. He's we're not far crazy. from crazy. And, it, and if you want the answers, you will sit down and listen to Michael Gill. You will listen to his interviews with you because he knows what he's talking about. He's going through it. He went through it. He's still going through it. So he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's involved with a lot of what's going on over here at Penn National. He gets calls from numerous people up here in Grantville. With Murray, she was accused of conspiring with vets to illegally administer drugs to her horses hormones, anti-inflammatory drugs within 24 hours of a race, wire fraud. No, she didn't plead guilty. As far as I know, it hasn't made the papers. No plea agreement was made or anything. Her next court date should be in November, I believe, is what the papers said. But that's, that's all I know about her. As far as where she lives, I couldn't tell you that either. <laughs> You wouldn't want to know. It's, with the Internet these days, though, those things are almost public information. You almost have to be careful or hide it. But ta talking about uh, Murray Rojas, and, and believe me, I know you have better things to do than discuss her problems. You bring up something right. interesting. You said that you agreed to not race in Pennsylvania, and you brought out a very important point. I've talked to Doug O'Neill over the years, and I'm grateful for the successes he's had recently for one reason and one reason only. Uh, not because we went to the same high school, but because when you're beaten up and beaten down and you defend yourself against charges that don't exist, I liken it in the news when I see stories 
of a man accused of something when he wasn't even there. The problem is that night he was homesick, didn't phone anybody, doesn't have an alibi, nobody saw him, so he could have been in another state. And right. he goes through this terrible nightmare that must have affected the Delusi family. You right. guys must have been staring at each other some days thinking, what do we do now? And i got to ask you the same question. What do you do now? Do you have plans to go and race in a different state? I know Daryl's training on a farm right now, but right. But don't you feel it's not fair that you should be told which jurisdiction you can run in? It, it's not. It's not fair to be told where you can run and where you can't run, and it's not fair when you're thrown accusations like like Penn National has done, and it's not fair when you know the criminal activity that is going on at the track and you sit down as Christopher McCurling does and doesn't take action against anything. That's what's not fair. You've had people who retired that were involved in this investigation that started with Daryl. Daryl had charges on him that did not even pertain to him. They were Anthony Adamo's charges. But yet, it was all put on Daryl Delahousy. Anthony Adamo is the one who had numerous charges, even throughout the state investigation, and nothing was done with him. If anything, he should have been arrested because what I have in my paperwork is evidence against things he has done. So he should have been arrested also. If you wanted to play fair, but he couldn't be arrested because he was involved with the gambling ring at Penn National. He was right, involved well, in everything, and he could he could have taken down some of Donnie Brown's friends, as I should say. But don't you wonder, though, you, even what you're saying is 100% true, don't you mm -hmm. wonder that if he turned and wanted to do that, that maybe he couldn't have taken any of them down? He, because... Well, well, think about that. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but think about this for a second. Let's say he fingered them. It seems like they're Teflon. It seems like nothing sticks to any of those people involved. And I'm not even sure exactly what happens with the gambling ring, but I do know that they couldn't pin anything like that on Daryl that he was asked to, you know, pull up horses or do anything like that because, number one, he's a trainer, uh, not the jockey. Uh, right. Number two... Uh, Mike Gill, who you work for, you actually don't, uh, at one time, you have nothing bad to say about the man except that he may have been a bit naive in trusting some people he shouldn't have trusted. Right, correct. Mike is a good person with a good heart and always looks out for everyone's best interest. He, he, did, he, he did trust a lot at that point, which I believe now He's very careful in who's, who he's trusting now. But, yes, Mike does trust. He does trust a lot of people. What, what but when you, you get in, when you get into, into everything that's going on here, and now that it's in, it's in the Fed's hands, now I believe things will happen and things will get done because they can't cover up an investigation like the state can cover up the investigation because some of your officials in the state, like your assistant district attorney at the time, Fran Charto, he was involved with players here at Penn National. He was having fundraisers for from Donnie Brown, who was a prominent owner here. Stephanie Beatty was his trainer. So when you're going up against the state and fighting, you you don't have a chance. I mean, because it's so corrupt. But now that it's in the federal hands, I just hope that it comes out clean and these people are exposed for the true criminals that they really are. You're not testifying. This is just an interview. But right. in, in, your, in your own words, how many people do you think this is going to involve this whole gambling thing that was going on at Penn National before it's over. Do you think we're talking about 10 or 15? Do you think we're talking about 30 to 50? How many people altogether were involved in all these different things that were going on illegally? 
and maybe still are at Penn National? I would put it in the 30 to 50 range because we've already passed the 10 to 15 range because I'm sure there were people that were arrested that wasn't made public knowledge, but I would put it in the 30 to 50 range, and I do believe there will be more arrests coming. And I do believe that the federal investigation will will pursue, and it will bring out the the truth about the national and what's going on. I would not want to be on your bad side. I appreciate I never I did anybody anything. All I did was come here to make an honest living and was crucified. I can walk on the track at at Penn National with my head held high because I know I didn't do anything. And me and my husband can go to bed at night and sleep and not worry about anything because he didn't do anything. And it was proven in the courts he didn't do anything. The charges that were thrown at him were obnoxious. And like I said, God doesn't sleep. God has his day, and these people will have their day. The recent one was the last person indicted, Murray Rojas. When you it can't be go okay. after... Pardon me? Mitzi, it can't be okay. I know you've dealt with this for a long time. I know it's troubled you and it's bothered you, and you feel some vindication when people realize. But you and I talked about this. You know, I told right. you what I went through in 1987. The accusations front page. The, yep, retraction, the retraction is only three lines on the back page, and people right. still whisper when you walk by and I I recognize as your friends do and people who know that you've been wronged and so has Daryl it, it's an awful thing to happen and every time someone goes down that should have gone down you sit and look at each other and go well there you go it's only five years too late but uh, yeah. it happened so just want to let you know Mitzi thank you for taking the time uh, you have a voice you have my number you call me anytime because I want to make sure you know that there are people listening that believe what you say. And anything you want to add, you want to give us a couple of fresh names, uh, do that. Anything you want to share with the public, they'll be here to listen to you. Thanks for taking time with us. We'll talk to you again very soon, Mitzi. Thanks, Roger. Take care. All right. All the best. Mitzi Delahousie joined us, and we will have her on again soon. I'm going to tell you something. The things that she knows and the things she dealt with, the man she loved being accused of things she knew he didn't do. But even at one point thinking, wait a minute, I better make sure that I'm not defending somebody who did these things. Well, look, uh, we've got to get to John Ardoon's selection and more information. So let me let you take a minute let you hear what Los Alamitos is planning. Uh, get your Western bagels out, your cream cheese on, and we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Roger Stein Show continues on AM 830.